All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, finding the average rate of change from both tables and graphs. So if they tell you uh, find the average rate of change, um, you can do that from a table and a graph. So rate of change or um, average rate of change this is a fancy way of saying slope. So what they're actually doing is they're actually telling you to find the slope for tables and graphs depending on the table or graph that they give you. So this is what I kind of have written down here. Average rate of change is also known as the average slope. Um, if you remember, slope is rise over run. Uh, and the slope between two points of a function, both linear and nonlinear. So what, what this means is that you could actually find the slope or the average slope, uh, not only for a line, but for any curve uh, or any graph that they give you. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a straight line for you to be able to find the average slope or the average rate of change. So. Uh, if you remember, let's go over let's go over the average rate of change uh, formula, and then I'm going to actually tie that in with something that you should already know. So this is the average rate of change formula. So what this is saying is that if you have uh, an interval a to b, so from a to b, and then some random function, right? And then you have the function evaluated at A and function evaluated at B. So you have some answers for that function. The average rate of change between those two functions becomes this, this uh, particular formula. It says uh, the function evaluated at B minus the function evaluated at A all divided by B minus A, which looks like a scary formula, but it's actually something that you've already done in the past. You actually did this in eighth grade. Uh, if you had a good teacher, you did at least. Um, and it is, it is actually the same thing as the slope formula. So the slope formula, what it is, it's basically the rate of change formula, but um, more specifically uh, applied to a line. So it looks like this. So it's y2 minus y1, right, fb minus fa, divided by x2 minus x1, or b minus x. So it's the exact same thing. All you're doing is you're applying this uh, and generalizing it for functions instead of just lines. Okay, what does this mean? So let's do some table examples, uh, which you've, you've done in the past, hopefully. And uh, we'll do some graphical examples. And then, um, yeah, that should wrap up this, this video after that. So let's work through some table examples real quick. So the examples are going to be as follows. So find the average rate of change between two sets of points, then describe the function as linear or nonlinear. So what do you know about linear and nonlinear functions? If you remember, or at least this is what you should know, Linear functions always have to have the same slope. So a line, if it's a straight line, it has to have the same slope everywhere for it to be straight. Nonlinear functions uh, basically do not have the same slope everywhere because of curves here and there. But for a straight line, the slope should be the same no matter where you find the slope at. Okay, so let's do some examples. Example one, two, and three. And then we're going to have to decide whether this is linear or nonlinear. Uh, now for these examples, we're going to be using the formula f of b, excuse me, minus f of a over b minus a, which is the exact same thing as here. Now, I like this formula better because you've seen this before, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one. But if you like this one as well, you can go ahead and use this one. It's the exact same thing. So we're, <coughs> we're going to have uh, the slope between two points, and we're going to have to find uh, the slope again between two points and figure, figure out how, does that, how do those two things compare to each other. So let me get some color up in here. So um, let's say you want to choose, and it doesn't matter which points you choose, by the way. We have one, two, three, four different points. So any one of those four or any two sets of those, two, of those points you can choose. I'm going to go ahead and choose these two. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and choose these two. But it doesn't have to be those points uh, specifically. You can choose any points that you want. Okay, so don't feel like you have to actually have these ones. So let's try to find the slope between these two points. So the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If we plug in the values of the function, so that's y minus y. These are the y's, right? f of x is the same thing as y. These are the x's, so I'm going to have 48 minus 3 on top. So y minus y over negative 1 minus 1 on the bottom. So y minus y over x minus x. Um, if you simplify this, you're going to get 48 minus 3, which is 45, negative, or sorry, positive. And then on the bottom, I get negative 2. So my slope or my rate of change is 45 over negative 2 between these two points. 
let's check the next slope. So if we do this again, let's see what we get. So 0, 12, negative 2, 96. So we're going to do it all over again. We have to do it so we can compare the slopes, right? If they're the same, it's a line. If they're not the same, it's not a line. So let's do subtract the y. So y2 minus y1, or 96 minus 12, over x2 minus x1. So 96 minus 12, y minus y, over negative 2 minus 0. Now notice in this one, I actually subtracted the bottom minus the top. As long as I stay consistent, the bottom minus the top on the other uh, bottom portion, it should, be the, it should be fine. So on example number one, at the top minus bottom for the y's, as long as I stick to the top minus bottom for the x's, I'm good. On, ex on this example right here, at the bottom minus top for the y's, as long as I do bottom minus top for the x's, I'm good. You just can't be switching it up um, because you're gonna be off by a negative sign. So 96 minus 12, uh, let's see what that gives me. So 96 minus 10 is 86, minus two more, that's 84. So that's 84 divided by negative two. Uh, 84 divided by two is 42. So that gives me the slope is negative 42. Now, you don't have to be a genius to know that those two are different, right? Negative 45 over negative two and negative 42 are different. So since they're different, this is gonna be a non-linear function. Okay, so different slopes means that it's not a line. Let's do another example. So example number two, again, you don't have to pick a specific set two points. You can pick whichever two points you want. Uh, for this one, I'm going to switch it up on you guys. I'm going to pick these two. Let's try to find the slope between these two. And then once we do that, let's try to find the slope between uh, some two other points. So Let's do these two first. So m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So subtract the y's, put it over, subtract the x's. That is 31 minus 10. So 31 minus 10 over 3 minus 0. So 3 minus 0. That gives me a total slope of 21 over 3, which is equal to 7. So 21 divided by 3 is 7. So that gives me my slope for, uh, for these two points. Okay. Let's do my rate of change again for two other points. Again, it doesn't have to be uh, specific points. You could just pick two random points. I'm going to pick the top one and the bottom one. Or if they actually tell you which ones to pick, then you got to pick those ones. So whichever ones they either they select for you or you select yourself. So that and that. Let's do it again. So we're going to subtract the y. So I'm going to do 59 minus 3. Again, bottom minus top. I put it over, subtract the x's. Bottom minus top. So 7 minus negative 1. Don't forget there's two negatives, right? So a negative for the, uh, in front of the one and then a negative for the formula. So be careful with that. So the slope is going to be 59 minus three. Why did I write that over again? I don't know. Oh, that's why. Seven plus one. So 59 minus three over seven plus one, two negatives make a plus, right? 59 minus three is 56. Seven plus one is eight. Uh, 56. Oh, 56 divided by 8 is equal to 7. Well, looky, looky. This actually means that these two are the exact same slope. We get 7 here, 7 there. Since they're actually matching, uh, this, this is actually a linear function. So we can conclude that this is linear. This is going to be a straight line. Okay, example 3. Uh, let's do one with only three points. That way, uh, it, the point can be can come across as you can pick whichever points you really choose to. So, let's try to find the slope between these two points and see what we get. So, I'm going to do m is equal to y minus y over x minus x. So, I'm going to do two minus negative two, top minus bottom, and I'm going to put it over zero minus negative two, top minus bottom. Again, two negatives next to each other make a positive, so just make sure you remember that. Uh, you have a negative and a negative next to each other, that, that becomes a plus. So that gives me a total slope of 2 plus 2 on top and then positive 2 on the bottom, which is 4 over 2. That becomes 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So the slope that I get, my value of m or slope for the first two points that I chose is 2. Now i got to do it again. So... Again, it doesn't matter if you overlap the points. I'm going to pick these two now. So the middle one and the bottom one to be able to find the slope for that. 
So let's do it again. Um, y minus y, so negative 2 minus negative 7. I'm going to put it over x minus x, so it's going to be negative 2 minus negative 4. Two negatives next to each other make a positive, so that becomes a fraction of negative 2 plus 7 over negative 2 plus 4. Uh, so we have negative 2 plus 7, which is the same thing as 7 minus 2, which becomes 5. Negative 2 plus 4 is the same thing as 4 minus 2. That becomes 2. So that gives me 5 over 2, which um, it's clear that, I mean, you could write it as a decimal. I mean, if you really wanted to, you don't have to know. Uh, this becomes 2.5. But either way, it's clear to see that the slope is not going to be the same, right? So the slope for one is going to be 2. The slope for the other two points are going to be 2.5. So we can conclude that this is nonlinear. Nonlinear. So it's not going to be a straight line. So I wrote it down here. Sorry about the fact that you guys couldn't see anything. So plugged in the values of x, y minus y, x minus x, y minus y, x minus x. This, is, this um, simplifies to negative 2 plus 7, which is 5. Negative 2 plus 4, which is 2. That becomes negative, oh, sorry, positive 2.5, which is different from 2, so I wrote nonlinear down here. Okay, hopefully this video was helpful. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one.